Hello everyone. How are you guys doing out there? Online, how you doing? And when I when I say that how you doing, it it's a tricky thing because I know some of us, some of us had like a really tough week. Maybe some losses, struggles, even challenges that you're facing. And as a believer, um, we're not in denial that we're going through things, but we also know there's a greater reality. And that's why, that's why David said, though I walk through the valleys, valleys, we go through valleys, we have mountaintops, we go through valleys. He says, I won't fear no evil because I know this is not going to end in evil. I'm going to get through the other side. I, I know, I know I'm going to, I'm in a struggle. I know I'm in a difficulty, but with God, but with God, I'm more than a conqueror. And, and right now, whatever you're facing, and when we say, how are you doing? I pray that you not look at your circumstances alone, but you look at your faith. And there's a time in your life that even though you're in a fiery trial or difficulty, the Bible says, even then, count it joy. And what he's saying, count it joy, because at the end, you're going to be developed, you're going to be stronger, you're going to come out with a victory. God is not putting you, remember, understand this, God is in the valley with you, he's in a fire furnace with you, and he's saying, I put you, I'm allowing you to go through this, but I'm going to show you how powerful I am, and at the end, it's not going to end the defeat, it's going to end in victory. How are you doing? Come on, give some praise to God, not just say, I'm doing good. Because I have a God that's going to take care of me. I'm going to get through this. You know, we've been talking about the end times. And we're going to continue talking about this. And today we're going to talk about a word, the apostasy. And the Bible says before Jesus comes back. Because he's coming back. He came the first time. And it was prophesied that he would come. And there was a lot of controversy when Jesus was on earth. The religious people of the day knew that it was prophesied. It was said before he ever came that he would come, that there would be a Messiah, that there would be a savior of the world. And, and, and he came. And many of the leaders of those days, religious leaders of the days, rejected him because he wasn't quite the leader they expected him to be. What they wanted him to do was overthrow the Roman Empire and put them in charge. Not that there won't be a day that God won't overthrow every system and every government and that he'll be in charge. That's coming next. How many are saying that's coming next? That's the second coming. The next time he comes, he's not coming as a savior. He's coming as a judge and a king. Next time he comes, he's going to come to th overthrow every demonic demonic system, every demonic kingdom, every demonic principality, and he's coming back and he's going to put his foot on the earth and he's going to destroy every enemy and he's going to be the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and every single one of us that believe will rule with him forever and ever in a world, come on, with no devil, in a world with no pain, in a world with no sickness, in a world with no death. Give God some praise that that's our future in Christ. But he, Jesus gave us and the word gives us a lot of precursors. These things would happen or signs that would happen before he actually comes back to earth. And one of the signs we're going to be talking today is this word apostasy. And I don't know how long we're going to cover this word apostasy, but it's really important for you to understand the question we're going to be asking today. Are we in an apostasy? Is there apostasy on this earth? So what is that? I'll explain it to you. But are we there? Is, is there an apostasy happening now? We're going to answer that question. And understand that before Jesus comes back, it's going to be increasing. Whatever is being said here, it's going to start increasing, increasing, increasing until he comes. Someone asked me, you know, is, is, is this world ever going to get back to what it was? It's going to get back to what it was originally intended to be when Jesus comes back. But until G went, and I said, well, what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen with this world. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. We're going to become more moral and more ungodly. That's what's going to happen with the world. Not us, but that's what's going to happen with the world. There's a lot of pain and hurt, and people need Jesus. How many understand that? And the darker it gets, the more pain there is, the more depression there is. And that's why the church is here. We're here to let people know that you feel hopeless. There's still an answer. And his name is Jesus Christ. 
This is not a time for the church to be quiet. This is a time for us to preach the good news. You can be saved. You can be forgiven. You can have eternal life. It's real. We're the answer. But there's the resistance in this world. And, and this is what the apostasy, we're going to talk about the apostasy, but that's what it's going to, that's what we're going to be talking about. A resistance to God and truth. And we're going to find that today. But let's pray. Are you ready to receive what God's word says about life? If you just receive what God's word says about life, you can start living the life. That's just, it's just amazing. You could have an amazing life if you just receive the word. His instructions. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this word that you've given us. We're in end time sign number eight. A great apostasy. And I just thank you, Lord, that you're going to talk to us about what that is. And also show us, are we there? Is this the beginning of an apostasy happening right now? Father, show us. Help us to understand your word. And we come against every spirit of resistance. Even rebellion. Spiritual blindness that won't allow us to hear and understand. There's not a place to be offended. Father, this is a place to get right. And you're not giving us your word to hurt us. You're giving us your word to save us, make us whole, make us complete, and set us free from addictions and the power of sin and save us from the ultimate judgment on sin, which is eternal separation from you forever. All you want is a relationship with us and our sin separate you from, our sin separate us from you, Lord. You send your son to reconcile that relationship. And Father, we're ready to be reconciled, be made whole, Restore our joy. Restore our peace. Father, give us hope. Today's the day of freedom and salvation. Equip your church to be able to fight the fight of faith in these last days. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let's look, turn to a scripture. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. And it begins to describe the end time sign number 8. It says this, let no one in any way deceive you or entrap you. The scripture is saying that there's people that actually will deceive you and they'll try to entrap you with the lies that they're telling you. God's given us his word so we don't end up deceived and trapped. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And what he's describing here in the scripture, he's saying the day of Jesus coming back won't happen until this happens first. Is Jesus Christ coming back? Yes. But it won't happen unless this happens first. That is apostasy. That is the great rebellion. That there would be a great rebellion against God, his word, and truth, it means the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. When there's a great falling away, the word apostasy means falling away. That means that believers are going to start backing up from biblical truth and start twisting the scriptures themselves. That there would be a rise of a faithful church that believes that God's word has no error in it and they use the word as their source of authority. They use the word to determine what's right and wrong. But there's going to be another church, a church that's fallen away. And this is what they're going to start doing, editing the Bible to match up their life. Editing the Bible to match up with their lifestyle. The abandonment of faith by professed Christians. They won't be able to handle the pressure. They won't be able to handle the deception. And the lawless, the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction, the antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. So it introduces an apostasy. And before the, after the apostasy, there's going to be an introduction to the antichrist which is going to be a false Messiah or a false Savior that comes to the earth. And his goal is to determine, to, to, to build 
a worldwide government, the Antichrist is Satan in a man. When Jesus came, it was God in the flesh. Satan is going to copy Jesus and he's going to come as Satan in flesh. He's going to be a worldwide leader. But before he could take over an atmosphere and take over governments, there has to be a setup in thinking. There has to be a falling away from truth. There has to be a society that gobbles up lies, deception, and satanic doctrine. Are we there? The word apostasy means this. A fallen away. A defection. A forsaken. A total departure from the principles and commands of the word of God. A departure from the principles and commands of the word of God. Today there are churches, there are apostate churches. That no longer that they use the word of God as their source of right and wrong. If you as a believer today do not use the word of God to determine what's right and wrong, the Bible and his commands, you are already part of the apostate church. So how will the apostate church, no, how will apostasy look like? And I'm going to give you three descriptions of a society that's in apostasy. Number one, there'll be a great rejection of God and the authority of the Bible. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, it says, don't let anyone deceive you by any means whatsoever. That day will not come before there arises a definite rejection of God. We're living in a time where people are proud atheists, proud agnostics. We're living in a time that we're more ungodly than we've been in at least a hundred years. We're not becoming more godly, we're becoming ungodly. There was a quote by Ronald Reagan. He said, without God, there is no virtue, virtue because there's no prompting of the conscience. And without God, democracy will not and cannot endure. If we ever forget that we are one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. So are we a nation that's going under? Are we in a society that's going under? Is there proof that there's a decline in faith in God in the U.S. and the world? But let's look, look at some of the stats. Deep into the 20th century, more than 9 in 10 Americans say they believed in God and belonged to an organized religion, with great, the great majority of them calling themselves Christians. Deep into the 20th century, 9 out of 10 people that live in America believed in God. And that number held steady through the sexual revolution of the 60s, through the, through the 70s, and through the greed of the 80s. But something happened. Today, only about a quarter of Americans believe that the Bible is actually the word of God. So we went from 75%, 9 out of 10 Americans that believed in the word of God and were pursuing God, were attending church, we're now saying this is what's happening now. Only 24% of Americans actually believe that the word of God is an authority, it's right, and they base their values off of it. This is the first time since 1937 that Americans who are members of a church are not the majority According to a Gallup report released, released this week, compared to 1945, when more than 75% of Americans belonged to some religious congregation. We went from 9 out of 10 to 24%, and it's declining. What's going on? We're in an apostasy. 
that means this is what's happening. We're actually falling away. There's a defection. There's a forsaken. There's a departure. How does this happen? This happens when we as Christians stop valuing the word of God. We stop teaching the word of God. We stop living by the word of God. We are the only ones on earth that can keep the truth alive. And when the church becomes a watered down organization that becomes worldly like everybody else, it loses its salt, it loses its flavor, and it loses its power. I want you to take a look at this video. And it's just a lady taking the Bible, throwing it in a toilet, mocking it, stepping on it. But she's just a reflection of what our society is today. We're devaluated the word, we treat it like trash, and she's only expressing her thoughts. I don't believe in it, I don't respect it, I don't honor it. And, and actually she's taking it from a street preacher, the Bible, and she's just throwing it in the ground, spitting on it, doing all kinds of stuff. And, and then the street preacher says, if this was another holy book, like the Quran or some, some actual uh, uh, Buddhist book, you would never dare do it. But you'll do it to the Bible. See, there will not be a resistance of religion. There'll be a resistance of the truth of the Bible. There won't be a resistance to the Muslim faith the Buddhist faith, the Hindu faith, there'll be a, a resistance to Jesus Christ and the Bible. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. There's only one name to call on to be saved, and that name is Jesus Christ. And the devil knows that if we could shut down Jesus and the Bible, we shut down the plan of salvation. Jesus and the word are the only threat to hell. Every other religion is false, has no plan, and has no savior. Take a look at this. Look at this. Disrespectful. This is a hate crime. You realize you guys are committing a hate crime right now? You guys, if this was a Quran, yeah, actually, you would not have done that. Here? Here. You would not have done this if this was a Quran. Because you're so That right there is a hate crime. And this is not an attitude that's actually not popular today. It's becoming more and more popular. Why? Because we're in a great falling away in apostasy. So how would apostasy look like? Number one, a great rejection of God and the authority of the Bible. Number two, Sound biblical doctrine will not be tolerated. I said again, sound biblical doctrine and teachings will not be tolerated. What? So much talk about tolerance. In the last days, there will be much talk about tolerance. But the one thing that will not be tolerated is sound biblical doctrine. Tolerate us. The word tolerance really means this, to allow to the existence Practice without prohibition to permit. Look at 2 Second, Second Timothy 4.1. But the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the latter times, last days, some will turn away from their faith, apostasy, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. That means there's going to be teachings of demons that are going to be prevalent throughout the whole world. We are being introduced to them right now. To me, it's amazing that we've gotten to the point that we're, we've gotten to the point in just two years that we don't know what a boy and a girl is anymore. How could we get to the point that we're arguing what's a woman, what's a man? It's not that there's an argument on the table. It's how fast that argument has now taken another step and now is being taught as truth or curriculum in school. 
teachers today are being taught the, the doctrines of demons. What demons do is redefine truth. And if you don't know the truth, you accept it because it sounds reasonable. And if we say nothing as a church, there is no rebuttal. And I've learned this. That you can never make sound decisions without hearing both sides. And right now, we're not hearing both sides. We're only hearing one side. And that one side is super loud with massive content, with actually companies spending millions and millions of dollars to push demonic doctrine to seduce us into believing lie to be misled misled seductive spirits and doctrines of demons demons misled by hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared as with a brand and iron, leaving them incapable of ethical function. And this is crazy. That means if you continue to resist truth, truth will no longer have conviction to you. You got to be careful that when you're exposed to truth, exposed to truth, that you don't resist it. Because if you keep on resisting it, you could become numb to truth. That it no longer affects you. I'm okay the way I'm living. Even though I used to think it was wrong, I don't think it's wrong anymore. And this is what's happened. You develop a resistance to truth. And the Bible describes it as you become a numb or your conscience being severed. You got to be careful what you're exposing yourself to. And you got to be careful what you're agreeing with. Come on, we as a church, come on, are not going to agree with doctrines of devils. And how do we know it's a doctrine of devil? It contradicts the Bible. Well, pastor, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I, I, I don't want to hurt. My, do you think my goal is to hurt people's feelings? My, my goal is to save people because I love them. And I, I, I will, I, this, is the, this is the reality. The church is the most loving organization and entity on earth because we love people enough to tell them the truth with love. We could, it's okay to let them know that they're lost, they're, on, they're not on track, and the reason that they're depressed and they're suicidal and everything's falling apart is because they don't know Jesus and they're living a life that's off track, it's off center, but we love them enough to let them know. Come on, do you want to be part of a church that's leading this fight? That we're shining our light in these last days and preaching the word of God. Can you handle sound doctrine? I don't know if you can handle sound doctrine until you, we, you hear something that doesn't match up with your lifestyle. Anytime truth is spoken and you resist it and you get angry or you walk out because truth is spoken, you can't handle sound doctrine. I left the church because the church and the Bible don't tolerate my lifestyle. It's not the church, it's God. And the problem is, is your lifestyle is ruining your life and God loves you enough. And he says, no, the path that you're headed is ruining you, ruining your family, ruining your mind. Come on, it's going to send you to hell forever. I love you. Let's talk. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine an accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. Understand, my job as a pastor and our job as a church is not to appease your lifestyle. Endorse wrong living. Our job is to challenge you. To let you know that right now, if you're stuck in drugs and, and you, you see yourself as an alcoholic, that you can get out of that lifestyle because there's a Savior that can set you free. 
Our job is to challenge you that if you've been depressed and you feel suicidal and you feel stuck in a sin and you can't get out, that there's a Savior that can deliver you, can make you whole, set you free, give you eternal life, and then turn a relationship with you. Amen. Can you handle being challenged by the word of God? What if it doesn't line up with your defined lifestyle? You know what you're supposed to do when your, mind, your life doesn't line up with the challenge of truth of God's word? You repent and you line yourself up with the word. You don't edit the scripture to match up with your lifestyle. We got too much Christian biblical editors. Would you go to school to be an editor? I edit what the Bible. I take out parts I don't like so it can match my lifestyle. And, and the parts I don't like I call hateful. And, and those that believe in those parts, I call them bigots. That's where we're at. I'll cancel you if you don't agree with me. That's the society we live in. So you believe in that old-fashioned Bible? I believe in the old-fashioned Bible because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll tell you this, right and wrong are always right and wrong. Society doesn't change right and wrong. And we got to stop evolutionizing and redefining what's right and wrong. The devil wants to redefine everything. And we're getting more and more confused. Like, who are you? I don't know yet. Are you a boy or a girl? In between. Okay. In between. What, what, what is that? How do we get here? We used to have boys' bathrooms, girls' bathrooms. Now, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be on a soapbox. I'm just wondering how we got so dumb. The doctors could tell you before you're born what sex are you. And you after you're born, you can't figure it out. That's why we have gender reveals before the baby comes out because they've already figured that out. That's science. And what we're trying to do is deny science to match up with our lifestyle because we don't want God to define our lives anymore. The end result is we don't want God to define marriage. We don't want God to define gender. We don't want God to define right and wrong. We want to define it. Praise the Lord. I said, Pastor, you got to calm down. I'm not calming down. They're not calming down. Why would I calm down? Come on, I love people. And what I'm saying is truth. They're defending absolute lies. And we're sitting there intimidating. You better learn the word of God and get conviction. Or you're going to become an apostate yourself. Pastor, come on, calmate. No, because this is the Holy Spirit. Hell, hell, line of Judah. Let the lions roar. Hell, hell, line of Judah. Let the lions roar. Hell, hell, line of Judah. Let the lions roar. Hell, hell, line of Judah. Let the lions roar. What does that mean? Come on. Jesus is not sitting in the corner. He's roaring right now. He's saying, we're getting ready for battle. It's a fight for truth. Are there any? Come on. Last day on fire. Spirit filled. Truth seeking. Truth walking. Biblical living Christians in this world. Come on. In this church tonight. Give God some praise. The truth is the truth. And God, Jesus is the truth. Lord Jesus.
For the time will come where they won't stop, tolerate. They won't what? But I thought we were tolerant. Oh, yeah, as long as you agree with us. We're tolerant as long as you agree with our philosophy. If I want you to call me a cat, you better call me by pronoun. And you better say meow, meow when I, you say hi to me. Or I'll, be, I'll go off on you. Who are you to disrespect me? Don't you know I realize I'm a cat? And you said, that, that sounds crazy. No, there's, a now, there's now a gender or, or a, a, a f fur. My gender is fur. And they actually take litter to, to school. They use their bathroom in a cat litter. The, the devil wants to debase your value. You were created in God's image to live a life of dignity, to live a life of purpose, to live a life of truth. Come on, to know right and wrong and to exemplify and see the prosperity and the power of God here on earth. It's time to shine light and get some conviction. And if you don't study the word, you have no conviction. You know why we're losing our, our next generation in universities? They don't know the word. And all they're doing is being exposed to doctrines of demons in the universities. And now they're starting in the elementaries. And if we don't prepare our children, they're going to be seduced. Why well, didn't raise you like that? And the schools are saying, we did. We did. We, we raised your children. You didn't tell them your truth, so we just gave them a whole bunch of doctrine of devils. And since they knew no truth, they couldn't even resist it. I know this is not popular. I'm not trying to be popular. We're trying to be effective. Come on. Is there anybody willing to stand out in these last days? God said, shine your light. Don't let your light be hidden under a bushel. Look at this. They will accumulate. No, no, no. Wait, wait. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, accurate instruction that challenges them with, with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. You know, when you told me that, that I'm a boy, that broke me. You were insensitive. I don't appreciate that. We're living in a world we can't handle truth. So what we're going to do, there's going to be preachers in these last days. Because they don't live right, they're going to be seduced by the same spirit. And what they're going to do is they're going to accumulate people and bring them into their churches to tell them what they want to hear. Appease them please them and send them to eternal destruction. I'm just telling you, there are demonic options out there if you don't like this. <laughs> I don't want you to take it. I'm just letting you know, if you fall in one of those churches, understand, you just went to an apostate church with a, with a pastor that's twisting scripture so he makes you feel good, but he don't love you. He's a messenger of same way. He has a title of a pastor. I know, but he got his he got his certificate from hell. And when he came in, he came with an entourage of demons of deception. And you came in except intentionally intended to be filled with the spirit, but you left with spirits of seduction and demons. And you get to the point that you tolerate all kinds of demonic things, but you can't tolerate the word of God. You know, if you want to go do a seance, go ahead, bro. We want to read tarot cards, get involved with a little witchcraft. That's all right. It's just, you know, they're like modern day prophets. 
You know, if you want to sleep with your girlfriend before you're married with no commitment, you know, you, you know, all you're doing is expressing love. Love is love. <laughs> to each his own, right? And the goal, you know, the goal is just being happy, right? And as long as you're happy and you're not hurting anyone, you're good, right? If you're thinking like that, you're already apostate. The goal is not happiness. The goal is to please God. Come on. The goal is to live right. The goal is to, come on, reflect God's image on this dark earth. And until you do that, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be empty. Lord Jesus, you're so good, Father. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen you know what's so crazy? The people are going to choose their leaders, not God anymore. Uh, this is what I know about this. If you're in this church, it's because God called you here. Come on. Give God some praise. God called you. He's doing all the choosing. He's doing all the directing. He's the one in charge of this whole thing. And then they'll get these teachers to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors that they hold. <laughs> We're living in the last days, my friends. We want to live in a world with no more rules. Let's take a look at this video right here. This is a mother that's literally saying, we live by no rules. No God. She's literally saying, we're apostate. We're totally secular. We want to live like if there's no God, we don't want to be connected to him. We don't want to hear from him. We don't want biblical truth. We set our own standards. As a matter of fact, my kid sets his standards. And all I'm saying is, parents, stop believing doctrines of devils. When they get old, I'm just going to let them choose. You don't let them choose. You're a parent. You come on, you show them and you train them right from wrong. And if you're believing that demonic doctrine, that it's not your job to doctrinate and train your children, you're becoming apostate. Your children don't tell you what's right or wrong. The word of God does and you're supposed to train them. Let's take a look at this. What age do you think it's appropriate to start making decisions? Maybe like you say he wanted to be a she, oh, would you go to hormone therapy and go down that road or would you kind of hold off on that? Um, well, it, depend, it would depend on the situation. So I know All right, let's rewind. Like, she rewind it to the know, beginning so we can hear it. He wanted to be a she, what age do you think it's appropriate to start making decisions? Maybe like you say he wanted to be a she, would you go to hormone therapy and go down that road or would you kind of hold off on that? Um, well, it, depend, it would depend on the situation. So I know there's a lot of like you know, that intersex uh, children with are, are born with, with like kind of stuff on equal sides. We're letting him have the, the, um, the authority and the onus to decide what he wants to be. We're not influencing anything. I think one of the earliest questions that he had when he was in kindergarten was he, he was in love with one of his friends, like his best friend. That was like the first time he felt like friendship love. And he also had his other best friend, which was a girl, and he asked, he's like, is, can I marry my friend, um, Evan? And I said, yeah. And like, so he's like an understanding and knowing that there's no, there's no rules now. Like, you, you, you know, we're not subject to like the teaching of our church that is like pushing and imposing a position onto something that feels so unnatural to that individual. Okay, I want you to understand this. This type of thinking is new. It's just within these last few years that a parent would even say that because they, didn't, they never heard of this type of stuff until recent. Because, but because we don't know truth, she tells her son that's asking for guidance. Like I love my friend Ethan. Is it okay later on I marry him? She should say, no, honey. He's a boy. And you're a boy. This is what the word of God says. 
In the beginning, God created man and woman. And then, this is what the word of God says, son. And this is what it says. That when you get older, a man will leave his father and his mother to be joined to his wife. And they'll become one. That's what the word of God says, son. So don't entertain that thought. A matter of fact, let's pray against it right now. And I say, pastor, why are you saying that? This is why I'm saying it. We've let it go so far and not teaching and not training. We've left our kids with options that they're taking that you should have eliminated already. And because you never taught them truth, you're going to have to eventually tell them truth. But it's going to be a lot more difficult because you've already let, allowed doctrines of demons and seducing spirits to introduce your family and your kids through movies, entertainment, and conversations with no rebuttal. Now, after you give them the Bible, they do have a choice whether they're going to follow it or not. But it's our responsibility. And where do we start? We start right now. And this is the house of truth. Because we teach the word of God. And we're not going to be an apostate church. Even though there's an apostate church out there. Because we're, what we're going to do is get our doctrine and the challenges of God's truth. And we're going to say, God, forgive me. I've been thinking wrong. No wonder everything's going wrong. I lost my peace. I've lost my joy. I'm suicidal. I'm more confused than ever. And if you're involved in a homosexual lifestyle in here, we are not here to put you down. Because I want you to understand this. We're all sinners. But I do want you to recognize that the Bible does call it sin. And sin means that you're off track. And when you're off track, this is what happens. You don't get to your locations. That means you have dreams and you have visions and you want to be happy and you want to have joy and you want to fulfill purpose and you're going to find in the end you're going to be empty and you're going to be depressed and you're going to miss it. And at the end, the one thing that could have made you whole, you'll reject. Because somehow you were convinced that my lifestyle, because the society was right. I love you. God loves you. But we're in the last days. And if no one's willing to stand up and speak truth and proclaim truth, that's the church's job. We proclaim truth. We preach truth with love so that people can be saved, be set free, and live for eternity. Your life on earth is very short. You're going to be here and then you're going to be gone. The greatest thing you could ever do in your life is find Jesus. Surrender your life to him. And the question is, how do you get right with God? And I'm going to end it with this statement. You cannot be saved, forgiven, from a sin that you don't admit is a sin. If you don't admit it, you can't be saved from it. And that's why there's, a, there's doctrines of demons to redefine what's right and wrong. So if you believe that right is wrong and wrong is right, there's going to be a problem. You can never be saved. No one could ever be saved rejecting truth and the doc sound doctrines of the Bible. When God calls something sin, your responsibility is to say, you're right. I messed up. No one could ever get right in denial. If you're an alcoholic, just admit it. I'm an alcoholic. Stop acting like you're not. This is your third drunk driving ticket. You just crashed the last car. You got cirrhosis of the liver. You're an alcoholic. Well, pastor, you're judging me. I'm not judging you. Just admit it so you can get healed and set free. And God can reverse the curse and give you a fullness of life and eternity and give you a high that the devil can't give you in that drinking. Look at this. This is it. Look what it says in 1 John 1, 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned, how do you know you've sinned? Hearing the word as it's challenging you with its truth and admitting it. If we freely admit, say it with me, admit that we have sinned, whatever the sin is, and confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, and everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. What does God promise, it, promise if we just admit that we've sinned? And we admit and we agree that what God calls sin, we call sin. This is what he promises. I'll forgive you. I'll make you whole. I'll cleanse you. I'll make you right. I'll restore your joy. I'll restore your peace. I'll fill your heart with my love. You'll finally be whole. You'll finally be complete. And I know it's not going to be easy, but it will be worthwhile. What I've learned when we're living wrong, that's not an easy life either. But the only problem is when you're living wrong, your life's not easy, but it gets worse. But when you finally say, man, I'm off track. I realize I'm a sinner. God, forgive me. Hear the voice of God and the love of God knocking on your heart's door. God's not putting down your lifestyle. He wants to set you free from the power of what's holding you. And he's saying what you think is making you whole is not making you whole. And you know it if you're honest. But if you come to me, I'll make you whole. But if you're willing to let go of that, I'll give you real life. I'll give you fullness of life. I promise you, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to give you eternal life. I'll give you my joy. You have access to my freedom. And I'll call you my child. And you can have a father never leave you. So there's a loving father that's talking to his teenage daughter. He said, baby, I know you're trying to find wholeness out there. With that relationship with that guy, that relationship with that girl. But I love you. You're not going to find it there. Come to me. Will you allow me to be your daddy? I won't leave you. My daddy left me. Not me. I won't leave you. I'll be there with you. And we'll get through these tough times. And God's just saying, trust me. I know what's best for you because I created you. And when you're willing to surrender to my definition of who you're supposed to be and your purpose, you'll be whole. I'm not trying to take something fun away from you or that's good away from you. I'm trying to lead you to the place that you have ultimate pleasure, contentment, and peace, salvation, abundance, a rich and satisfying life. I want to give it to you. If you'll just admit, I'm off track. I'm a sinner. Save me. Whatever you've been going to, that you think, man, I'm going to that thing and it makes you happy for a minute. But you've been finding out the more you go to it, the less fulfilling it is and the emptier you are. God is saying, stop going there. Don't do one more run. Come to me. Let me forgive you. And no matter what you've done, God says, if you'll admit it, I'll forgive you. If you'll admit it, I'll cleanse you. If you'll admit it, I'll save you. Let's all stand up. Let's give the Lord a hand for his word. Come on, the great ap apostasy. Oh, Lord. Whew. We're going to dismiss in just a second. But I'm going to tell you this, that there's a portion I was supposed to get to I didn't get to yet. But I'm going to get to it next week. Come on, pray for me. I'll get to it. How many understand apostasy? Understand that. So next week, we're going to talk about Praise the Lord. See, he's right here. Praise the Lord. Nice to see you. Praise the Lord. Hey, next week we're going to talk about the great falling away. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the genesis of homosexuality next week. Like, how did it ever start? We're going to talk about that next week. Um, pray that I get there. And the reason I'm staying on this subject, I'll tell you why. I want the church to be fully equipped. I want you to know what the Word of God says about these last days last day subjects because I want you to go out into this world knowing truth so you're not defeated by deception you or your family the, I, I want you equipped for battle and I also want us to be a church that reaches out to every segment of society 
and they could come to get saved, healed, set free, be made whole, and receive eternal life. It's not going to happen unless there's some preachers and truth tellers with love. It's the only way. You're not loving if you ignore everybody. You're not loving if I'm saved. That's all that matters. No, it's not just you saved. I want everyone to get saved. And we're going to reach out with love. But also I want you to wear young people. There's a great falling away. So keep your guard up when you're in school. Some of the teachings are going to be demonic doctrines. And I'm not saying you need to walk up, walk, just walk out of class. What I'm saying is know, your, know what you believe. And it's okay to raise your hand and say, wait, 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 wait hold on. There, isn't there another side to this subject? I know you just taught evolution, but isn't there creationism that God created the heavens and the earth? It's your job to stand up. Not rude, lovingly. Know your word. It's okay. I'm going to equip you for that. We're not going to send you out there with wolves, like lambs among wolves, with no protection. We're going to send you with the truth and the shepherd. Come on, so you got some victory. You, got to, you know what you believe, okay? I'm going to have Christian close us out because I could preach all night long and I already know where I'm headed. Like, we're just beginning this process. Are you guys receiving what God is saying, church? I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say one last thing. Christian's going to close this out, but I'll tell you this. that After I preach, there's a lot of spiritual warfare that I have to go through as a pastor. Um, sometimes, as you're covering and tackling the mindset, the antichrist spirit, these doctrines of demons, I want you to get this. Not sometimes. There's always resistance. And I am not here to hurt you. I'm here to love you. And if you hang out here enough, you're going to find out I'm not no hate preacher. I'm a truth speaker. And because I love you like a father, I'll tell you never to hurt you though. Just to let you know what's right and wrong. And I pray with all my heart that you choose life. There's a scripture that says, I present to you life and death. Choose life. And I know if you're, you're having a hard time maybe trusting, because all you know is what you know and the lifestyle that you're in. He said, I'm having a hard time. If I come back, if I come into this community, will I be loved? Or I'll be left all alone? Will I be an outsider? You will not be an outsider. You will be a family member and you'll be loved with unconditional love. And the church, come on, I'll be here. The church will be here forever. We love you with your good, your bad, and your ugly. That's how God loves me. We love you, okay? Next week, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss anything. We're, I mean, after we talk, finish talking about the apostasy sign number eight, we're going to be talking about next, we're going to tackle the subject of abortion. And we're going to say, that when, what does the Bible say about abortion? And when is, is the, the baby, when does it become a baby or a child or when does it have life according to God? We're going to find that out. You're going to be surprised what the Bible says. Oh, Lord, tell us, Pastor. Not today. That's for next week, okay? Not next week. The week after next. God willing. God, I don't know how long, long we'll be on this. But we're going to make sure I give you every single scripture so you're, you're, you're ready loaded up with truth. Your gun's loaded to fight against the enemy. Come on. Amen. Love you guys so much. Christian, close us out, please. Let's give Christian a hand. He's awesome. Amen. Can we give Pastor Marco a hand? How many received a word tonight? Can we give God a hand if we received a word tonight? Thank you, Lord. Before we leave, we give everyone this opportunity to respond. The Bible says a wise person is someone that hears the word and obeys it. We heard the word tonight, right? Now let's respond. And I, I, re I remember one day I was, it's funny, you talked about university. I was in college and I was reading my Bible and I caught myself reading scripture to try and redefine how I saw it to accommodate the way I was living. 
And God checked me in that moment and said, the reason why you're having a hard time is because you're having a hard time letting go. Don't try to get the word to match your life. You match your word. I mean, you match your life to my word. And tonight, you may have heard something that have caused you maybe to say, my life isn't matched up to God's word. And just like pastor said tonight, right now need to be the moment where we just admit and we say, I need to come clean. I just need to confess. I, I need a savior. I need forgiveness. I, I haven't been doing it right. I'm not doing it right, but I'm ready to come clean. I'm ready to admit that I need to do things right. That's how we're responding tonight. So I wanna make two calls. I wanna make a call for the person that's saying, I'm ready to admit, to come clean to before the Lord and give my life to him. And I wanna make a second call. You know, the Bible says that we have all sinned. Everyone falls short. We're all in the same boat. We've all lied or cheated or stolen or lusted or, or we're angry to the point of wanting to hurt somebody. We've all done these things. And the Bible says the price, the wage, what we owe because of our sin is death. That's how we must pay it back, death. So I'm just gonna die because I sinned? Well, it's actually goes a lot deeper than that. It's eternal death. It's hell forever. That's the price we owe for our sin. But God loves us so much. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son, Christ Jesus, to die for us. In other words, to become the price or the ransom for our sin. Jesus paid the price that we owed. Come on, that's good news. That's the good news. The bad news is that we've sinned and we owe a price. The good news is that Jesus paid the price for you. I got even better news. The better news is this. You don't have to try and earn that love. He's already freely given it to you. You don't have to go out and do a hundred good deeds. You don't have to turn your life around. You don't have to kick your addiction now. You don't have to change who you are and then come back to God. The best news is this. You can come freely to him tonight and you can lay your life right down at his feet. All the sin, all the baggage, all the hurt, all the addiction, all the lifestyle. You can give it all to him and he will trade that in and give you his righteousness. He will give you his forgiveness. He will give you a brand new start. This is the grace and the mercy and the love of God. The heart of God is that he wants you to have a new start and a new life. And he purchased that for you. Tonight you can be saved. You can be forgiven. And all you must do is confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and repent of your sins, which means turn away from your old life and turn to him tonight. Don't put it off another day. Don't wait for tomorrow. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. The Bible says tomorrow isn't promised. Tonight could be our last night. And, and, and we want to be sure that if we die tonight, that we would spend eternity with God in heaven forever. Don't gamble your life away. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. Give your life to Jesus tonight. Surrender everything. Come clean and give him your all. Tonight, if you're saying, I want to receive Jesus Christ, I want to make him my Lord and my Savior, I want to be forgiven of my sin, and I want to know if I were to die tonight, that I would go to heaven with him forever. If that's you, when I count to three, all over this room, from the front to the back, I want you to just raise your hand when I count to three. And you're going to do this with boldness. Don't be afraid of who's next to you. If God is speaking to you, if God is tugging at your heart right now, that means he's calling you, and he's saying, I love you. I want to forgive you. I want to give you a new life. If that's you and you're ready to make that decision, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this room. You ready? Are we ready, church? Here we go. One, two, three. Hands all over the place. I see your hand. I'm proud of you. I see your hands back there. I see your hands back there. I see your hand back there. I see your hand. I'm proud of you. I see your hand. I see your hand. I'm proud of you guys. Anybody else just saying that to me? I want to receive Jesus. I see you. I see you. I'm proud of you. If you raise your hand tonight, I want you to do one more bold step. This isn't too, 
to embarrass you. This is to congratulate you, to pray with you, and to stand with you in this fight. And we're going to be with you in this battle. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to come make your way out into the aisle and come forward. And we're going to pray with you. We have a whole team up here that's ready to pray with you, equip you, strengthen you, fight for you, and be right there by your side. Come on, church. Let's get excited right now. Let's praise God for all those that are giving their life to Jesus. that are up here that have just come up I want you to look at me for a quick second everyone that just came up here proud of you proud of you we, we have a there's a plan that God has written for you to help you grow in your walk your next step is to be baptized and I know you I'm sure you've heard of baptism or you've seen it before but your next step get baptized Let's make a statement to everyone around you, your family, your friends, the whole church, that you're dying to the old you and you're raising up a new creation. That's what baptism is. And also what we're going to help you to do, we're going to help you to join a class. It's called Holy Warriors. Let's say Holy Warriors. This class will equip you with everything you need to walk out your Christian walk, to be sold out completely, to learn how to fight in your Christian walk and become the man or the woman of God that God has called you to be. Are you ready to take that step tonight for everyone that came forward? Are we ready for this? Let's do this. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you, and they're going to help you get signed up for the class and for baptism. Okay, we're ready. Church, let's bow our head and let's close our eyes and let's pray together. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me, for forgiving me. I admit that I'm a sinner. I've messed it up but God you found me right here in my dark place save me set me free I believe that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead paying my debt washing away my sin and defeating death I receive salvation I receive your spirit within me from this day forward I am a new creation and my life will never be the same I am your child I am not an orphan I belong to you I will not go back I will not listen to the lie but I will listen to you to your word and I will follow you all the days of my life thank you for saving me and for setting me free in Jesus name I pray Amen, amen, and amen. Church, can we give God one more shout of praise tonight for all that he has done? Now, don't forget, don't forget, Pastor is going to continue next week, and we're going to talk about some heavy topics. Now, these are the nights that you want to invite friends or family. We want to be here. Let's pack this place out. Also, for all the young adults in the place, this Friday night, we kick off Mission Month with Samuel Rodriguez. You don't want to miss it. Friday, This Friday at 7 p.m. Invite your friends and family. Everyone can come out. Let's have a great time. And for all the women, don't forget, there's a booth out there. You can sign up for Women's Conference. Don't miss your opportunity. The tickets are going so fast. VIP has been sold out. You don't want to miss it. All the ladies, go and visit the, the booth in the foyer. Sign up for Women's Conference. We love you, church. We'll see you Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.